How to understand damage thresholds? Do you measure laser beam power or energy? Wondering about your detectors, damage thresholds, and how to make sure they will not be exceeded? Let's find out. Welcome back, I'm Fel from Gentech EO, your partners for accuracy. It is very important to maintain your measurement tools to their best performance by not exceeding damage thresholds in terms of total average power and pulse energies on the detector and by not exceeding damage thresholds of the absorbing area in terms of laser power density and energy density. If you use a continuous wave laser, for example, make sure the average power density in watt per square centimeter is lower than what your detector absorber can withstand. Average power density, this is your average power in watts divided by the surface area covered by your laser spot area. With a flat top beam profile, simply use the result of this calculation and compare that to your Gentech EO specified damage threshold. For example, with the 55 mm aperture detectors, we go up to 2.5 kilowatt in total average power measurement. The damage thresholds here for flat top beam, that's 45 kilowatt per square centimeter. If you go to larger detectors, this one takes up to 30 kilowatt in continuous. Uh, damage thresholds are in consequence slightly lower. With a Gaussian beam profile, if this is what you're using, therefore the intensity is doubled in the center of the beam, let's divide your average power by the area covered by your circle of diameter 1 over squared, then multiply this value by 2, and then you can compare that to your specified damage thresholds in uh, watt per square centimeter. Or simply use a Gentech EO online product finder that can just make all those calculations for you. In case your laser beams show hot spots or you're unsure about the profile, it's common to apply a safety factor of 3 to this calculation. The maximum allowed average power density of your detector absorber. That does depend on the laser wavelength and the total average power level targeting the detector. We do provide guidance for safe use um, using specified damage threshold in given conditions that we know and application knowledge that we can just provide to you guys for serving your very precise needs. When using pulse lasers this time, both average power density watt per square centimeter and energy density of your laser in joule per square centimeter need to be verified. The average power in watts is of course the energy per pulse in joule multiplied by the laser repetition rate in hertz. Energy density, that's obtained as well by dividing the pulse energy in joules by the surface area and again, depending on your beam profile, multiplying that by the factor 1, 2 or 3 as well. The maximum allowed energy density in joule per square centimeter on a given detector, that's a function of your laser wavelength, pulse width, average power in watts. And again, we do provide guidance for safe use. You may want to check the Check out my application feature on the Gentech EO website. I can help you guide you as well. Please contact us, stay in touch with us, and subscribe to the channel for the best tips on how to realize the most accurate laser beam measurements for your application. Thank you for watching.